Sora is a high school student who lives with his aunt, but his aunt always locks herself in her room to do design work. And one fine day, Sora suddenly receives a huge package sent by his father from Egypt. After opening the package, Sora is shocked to find out that it is a coffin, and Sora's father has left a message saying that inside the coffin is a mummy. He tells Sora to treat this mummy as a family member. Sora's father is an adventurer who travels all over the world, so the things he sends back are either cursed dolls or demons. So Sora thinks that this mummy is definitely not an ordinary thing. Soon after, a tiny, harmless-looking mummy steps out of the coffin. But Sora still thinks it is dangerous, so he carefully pushes it back into the coffin. Sora suddenly saw water coming out from inside the coffin, and it turned out that the little mummy was crying because he was afraid of being sent back to Egypt by Sora. Seeing that the mummy kept bothering him, Sora used a notebook to block it, so it pretended to knock on the door to ask to pass. The mummy asked to help Sora with housework in order to stay here, but it couldn't do anything because its body was too small while everything was big. He even fell into the sink, so Sora had to quickly throw him out. Sora took out his books to research some information about the mummy, but there was no result. And Sora's dog suddenly bumped into the door, so he quickly ran to pick it up. When he saw Sora holding the dog, the little mummy felt extremely jealous, so he barked like a dog to get Sora's attention and then jumped straight at him. Sora tried to pick the little mummy down because he was afraid he would fall, and both of them wanted to be held by Sora, so they barked back and forth to fight over him. Sora named the mummy Mai, and after being named by Sora, the mummy felt extremely happy. Sora gave Mai some water to drink, but he hugged the bowl and poured the water straight on himself, so Sora had to use a bottle cap as a drinking cup for him. Sora rummaged through the kitchen to find something for Mai to eat, but when he returned, he was shocked to see Mai eating dog food. Sora brought out some foods to see what Mai would eat, and it seemed like he really liked apples or ramen. The next day, during lunch at school, Sora told his best friend Tezuki about Mai, and Tezuki had never seen anyone keep a mummy in their house, so after school, Tezuki went with Sora to his house to see what Mai looked like. As soon as he got home, Sora was shocked to see Mai dried up like a real mummy, but luckily, after giving Mai water, he immediately returned to normal. Sora brought Mai to him first, and Tezuki let her get to know him. But Mai was extremely scared because Tezuki looked like a bad guy, so he didn't dare let Tezuki touch him and quickly hid behind Sora's back. After Tezuki left, Sora brought Mai into the bathtub to bathe with him, and Sora was very surprised to see Mai swimming in the bathtub very happily. But because too much water had seeped in, his belly was swollen after swimming. Every time he came home from school, Sora would see Mai shriveled up without knowing the reason. Seeing that Mai seemed to really want to do housework, Sora made him a small knife. Sora gave Mai some cucumbers to play with, and while he wasn't paying attention, Mai accidentally stepped on a piece of cucumber, causing him to fall. Luckily, Sora was quick to catch him before he hit the ground. Tezuki went to Sora's house to study with him. While he was preparing some snacks, Mai had to be alone with Tezuki. Seeing that Mai was more and more afraid of him, Tezuki wanted to tease him even more. And Tezuki used some snacks to lure Mai and then immediately captured him. Tezuki wanted to try removing the bandage because he wanted to know what was inside Mai. But Sora stopped him and said that Mai might die if she did that. Sora gave Tezuki some dog food and told him that Mai liked it very much. It was true that after Tezuki gave Mai some dog food, Mai became closer to him. The next day, afraid that Mai would wither again, Sora took him to school with him. Because he wasn't paying attention, Sora let a girl named Moki see Mai. But luckily, Mai pretended to be motionless like a doll. Moki felt that Mai was extremely cute, so she asked Sora to make her one, and later made several stuffed animals that looked exactly like Mai to give to Moki. But Sora was shocked to find out that Moki had taken the real Mai. Next was gym class, so Moki left Mai in the girls' changing room. And Mai saw a hole in the wall, so he went through that hole to get out. He climbed up the ventilation shaft and accidentally encountered a mouse. So he panicked and ran away from the mouse's pursuit. Meanwhile, Sora and Tezuki were running all over the school to find Mai, and they saw Mai being chased by the mouse. So Tezuki used his shirt to catch the mouse to rescue Mai. Sora gave Moki another stuffed mummy, and he had to be more careful not to give her the wrong Mai. Sayora's Aunt Keed finally came out after several days of locking herself in her room to work, and when Ken saw the dog food bento box on the table, he was shocked because she thought Sora had been eating dog food to survive all this time. Sora had to explain to Aunt Keed that the dog food was for Mai, 
but for some reason, she had no interest in Mai and was only interested in his coffin. Sora was about to go to school when he suddenly collapsed and had a fever, so he had to take a day off. Sora locked the door to prevent them from getting in because he was afraid of infecting everyone. But Keed still rushed into Sora's room through the window with a gas mask. She even took a piece of medical tape to make a mask for Mai. After taking care of Sora, Keed went to the kitchen to prepare dinner for the family, and because she was worried about Sora, Mai cried for many days afterwards. Keed was shocked to find that Mai had withered again like before, and Sora knew that every time Mai cried, he would lose water until he withered, so he had to let him stay by his side to avoid her crying again. When Tezuki heard that Sora was sick, he came and wore a mask to visit him. He told Mai to take good care of Sora. That night, seeing that Sora's handkerchief had dried up, Mai wanted to wet it with some water. But the basin of water was on the table, so Mai couldn't put the huge towel on it. Mai went to the table himself, jumped into the basin of water, and used himself as a handkerchief for Sora. The next day, Sora woke up feeling much better, but Mai, who had soaked his handkerchief in water all night, caught a cold. Although Mai had a cold, he didn't understand why Mai wanted to run out to the playground. So Sora prepared a woolen hat and a scarf for Mai to keep him warm, which looked very cute. But as soon as he ran out, Mai suddenly jumped to the ground and dug a hole. Seeing that Mai seemed slow, the dog ran out to help Mai dig. Mai ran to the hole and buried herself in it. Sora was very worried, not knowing why Mai did that. Sora even started to fear that Mai would never come back. However, after half a day in the hole, Mai crawled out, and Sora discovered that after Mai was in the ground, he was completely cured. Even the mud stains on Mai were completely gone. Every time Ki puts on her glasses, she seems to turn into a completely different person, and she becomes a much bolder person than usual. But as soon as she takes off her glasses, she returns to normal, so Tazuki tells Keed to control her multiple personalities. Tazuki was on his way home when he suddenly felt someone following him, and after looking closely, he discovered that it was an Oni child. But he didn't want to adopt the Oni child, so he left it there and went straight home. However, as soon as he got home, he saw the Oni child standing outside the window, so he closed the curtains to keep it from coming in and continued studying as usual. But seeing the Oni child standing outside all night, Tazuki had to let it in. Tazuki said that he would only let the Oni child stay for one night and had to leave the next morning. The Oni child was as dirty as a pig, yet he still dared to climb straight onto Tazuki's bed. He jumped straight into a cup of hot tea to take a bath, almost getting burned. At night, he snored so loudly that Tazuki couldn't sleep. The next morning, Tazuki threw the Oni child straight out into the yard. And when he got to school, he told Sora about it. However, every night the Oni child came to Tezuki's house to beg for food, and all the food in his house was eaten by the Oni child. Tezuki and his sister felt that the Oni child was gradually becoming their pet. Sora said that it would be okay for Tezuki to adopt Mai, because Sora knew that deep inside Tezuki was a person who loved animals very much. Tezuki and Sora had been seeing strange creatures since they were very young, and those creatures only appeared to those who could help them. That night, Tezuki asked the Oni why he kept following him. It turned out that the Oni liked Tazuki because he had a scar on his hand like him. But Tazuki said that he wasn't his gangster brother. The next day, Tazuki brought the Oni to Sora's house to let him get to know Mai. And because they were unfamiliar, the two of them just sat there staring at each other without blinking. But after getting to know each other, the two of them played tag around the living room happily. Sora suggested that everyone make sushi together to welcome the Oni. And because it was his first time, the Oni couldn't roll a single sushi. But Mai was very skillful at rolling sushi because he often helped Sora with housework. Sora made two sushi with Mai's face and the Oni's face, making the Oni so happy that he didn't know what to say other than to like the video. As soon as he got home, Tezuki made the Oni take a bath to clean himself up, but it pretended to snore because it didn't want to take a bath. When it heard Tezuki badmouthing him, it stood up and kicked him a few times. A classmate gave Tezuki and Sora a fake lizard. Sora gave the lizard to Mai so that Mai could wrap it into a mummy. But he couldn't wrap the tail, which made him so angry that he cried. The classmate accidentally dropped his fake lizard on the school grounds, and it fell right in front of Moki, scaring her away. On the way home from school, Moki told her friends that she had been extremely afraid of reptiles since she was little. Sora asked why Tezuki didn't bring the Oni to school to play. Tezuki said that it was too naughty if he went to school. Tezuki's school life would be over. As soon as Sora got home, he suddenly saw Aunt Keed and the dog sleeping in a coffin, and he told Mai not to cry while he went out to buy food. 
Meanwhile, Moki just entered her bedroom and suddenly saw a dragon sitting on the table, and the dragon was also flustered, flying around the room looking for a place to hide. It even pretended to blend in with her stuffed animals, but Moki was very afraid of reptiles, so she screamed. She was scared and ran downstairs and fell. The dragon rushed down because he was worried about her, but Moki was still very scared and threw all the furniture at the dragon to chase it away. Moki was so strong that he could lift the cabinet and throw it at the dragon. But this dragon was so smart that it avoided everything. Sora was shopping when she saw Moki running straight out, and she asked Sora to go inside to catch the dragon for her. But as soon as she entered, Sora saw a scene of destruction caused by her. Sora was no longer surprised when she saw the dragon in the closet. And the dragon made a gesture to tell Sora that Moki had just fallen down the stairs, so Sora guessed that the dragon was just worried about Moki. After knowing that, Moki was extremely regretful for trying to chase the dragon away. The dragon gave Moki a flower to make up with each other, which made her very touched and hugged the dragon and her. Sora brought Moki to his house to let the dragon and Mai get to know each other. And he told Moki not to tell anyone about her dragon because scientists would capture them for experiments if they knew these legendary creatures were real. Sora also told Tezuki to bring Oni to meet a new friend. They had prepared some food for their pets, but Moki's dragon only ate a few things and was not omnivorous like the Oni. That night, Sora said that Moki's dragon took great care of Mai and the Oni. Meanwhile, Mai always needed to be served like a baby, and when he heard that, he felt very sad because he was useless. The next day, Moki's friends all took pictures to show off their pets. Moki was about to show off her dragon when she remembered Sora's instructions. But Sora and Tezuki said that if she wanted to show off her dragon, she should show it off to them. Moki told everyone that she taught her dragon to write, and everyone thought she was lying, but unexpectedly it could write, and it even taught Mai how to write along with the Oni. Mai wrote a line of words on a piece of paper and gave it to Sora, but looking at Mai's shy expression, it seemed like he wrote something very emotional, and Mai wrote that he wanted to be by Sora's side forever, which moved him deeply. Tazuki thought that his pet could only write sushi, but unexpectedly it asked him if its handwriting was good. And when Tezuki criticized his bad handwriting, and when Tezuki criticized his bad handwriting, he climbed on top of him and hit him. While everyone was sitting in the garden, the Oni suddenly pulled up a radish. And the radish screamed loudly, giving everyone a headache. Sora's father had brought this radish back during an expedition. And Keed often used these radishes as alarm clocks. The radish suddenly rolled away at a very high speed and was about to leave Sora's house. So everyone hurriedly chased it to the riverbank. Mai jumped into the river to catch it but fell into a mud puddle while the Oni jumped into the water. However, the dragon flew out and caught the radish very easily. And seeing that, Mai felt sad because of its uselessness. As soon as they got home, they all fell asleep because they were quite tired from playing today. Seeing Oni catch a cold, Mai covered him with a blanket and wiped his nose, so Sora realized that Mai was also growing up a lot more than before. When they left, everyone saw Mai and the baby dragon talking to each other about something and it turned out that the two of them were planning to pair up for their master. That night, Moki was reading a book when her dragon brought out a pen and notebook to practice writing, and it could bathe itself without needing its master to help like Mai or Oni. Even at night, when it saw Moki sleeping with her belly exposed, it covered her with a blanket because it was afraid she would catch a cold. A student in the school named Daichai suddenly stood up and shouted loudly in the classroom, and after leaving the classroom, he suddenly fainted and fell on Sora. Tezuki and Moki were waiting for Sora to go to the rooftop to have lunch together. They were very surprised when they saw Sora carrying Daichai here. It turned out that Sora had brought Daichai to the infirmary, but they didn't dare to be near him, so Sora had no choice but to bring him here to rest. Daichai suddenly woke up and punched Moki, but luckily Sora saved her in time. He looked extremely panicked, as if he had just experienced a terrible nightmare. At the end of class that day, Sora went to Daichai's class to talk to him privately, and Sora learned that Daichai always had nightmares, so Daichai often suffered from insomnia, which made his mind unable to stay calm. Daichai said that he had put up anti-evil charms to avoid nightmares, but when he got to his room, Sora was shocked to see that he had put up charms all over the windows, so Sora had to help him take down all the charms and thought that this guy was too superstitious. Sora gave Daichai a drawing of a beast called a Baku. He said that the Baku loved to eat other people's nightmares, so Daichai put the picture under his pillow to avoid having nightmares. That night, Daichai suddenly woke up in the middle of the night and felt like he was no longer having nightmares. But when he looked to the side, he saw a very strange animal, so he panicked and called Sora for help. 
When he got to Daichai's house, Sora discovered that the strange animal was a Baku, and it ate all of Daichai's nightmares to help him sleep better. A few days later, everyone was surprised to see Daichai happily going to school, and he said that the Baku ate all of his nightmares every night, so he was able to sleep better than before. Daichai apologized to Moki for attacking her on the rooftop and she forgave Daiichi after Sora explained everything to her. Sora told Daichai to take Baku to his house to let him play with the other pets. But the other pets kept jumping on Baku, which made him extremely uncomfortable. Baku suddenly jumped straight onto Daichai's head at an extremely fast speed, and Sora said that Bacchus can move at a speed as fast as the speed of sound. When Moki got home, she was surprised to see Tezuki's Oni in her house. This Oni often ran away from home to play around, so everyone was worried that it might be caught by others. Everyone felt the need to find someone to look after the pets while they were at school, and Sora said that he knew a friend who could do it. Sora led everyone to a talking statue outside the shrine near his house, and when they saw him, Daichai and Moki were completely speechless. Tezuki and Sora often came here when they were kids, so they knew him. While everyone was talking, Sora was suddenly taken away by a ghost standing behind him. Even though he was very afraid of ghosts, Daichai still tried to chase after him to save Sora. However, as soon as they entered the shrine, they saw Sora leisurely sitting and drinking tea. And it turned out that it wasn't a ghost but a god who ruled this shrine. Everyone left their pets with the god in the mountain while they went to school. And after that, Sora and his friends brought their pets to the shrine every morning. Seeing the pets playing, the shrine became more and more like a kindergarten, and while playing, Mai suddenly saw a beetle outside the door. So Mai crawled out to play with the beetle, but the god didn't know it was outside, so she accidentally closed the door. Mai panicked and knocked on the door, but because he was so small, no one heard him. Afraid that someone would see him, Mai quickly hid under the shrine. Soon after, an oni appeared and thought that Mai was lost, so it led Mai with it deep into a forest next to the shrine. And this oni was another demon, not Tezuki's oni. On the way into the forest, Mai saw many mythical creatures like her, and the oni led Mai into its house under a tree to shelter from the rain. The oni wanted Mai to stay here with it, but seeing Mai's sad expression, it promised to bring Mai back to the temple after the rain stopped. The god also discovered that Mai was missing, so she panicked and ran all over the temple to look for Mai. Luckily, when the rain stopped, Mai returned to the temple. When Sora found out, he told Mai to write a letter to thank the Oni. And after receiving Mai's thank you letter, the Oni put the letter up on the wall. Tazuki's Oni always stole his sister's food, making her so angry that she cried. And this time it ate the cake that Sora had just made for her, so Tazuki scolded it and told it to get out of the house if it continued to steal it. But Oni still didn't care and got angry with him. The next morning, Tazuki didn't see Oni anywhere, and he thought that maybe it had run away. Tazuki's little sister had just come home from school when her little sister said that she had prepared some food for Oni, but she hadn't seen it today. The following days, Tazuki still didn't see Oni return and saw that he always came to school with a gloomy face, so Sora went to ask about him. After knowing that Oni was missing, everyone decided to help Tazuki look for it. And when Oni didn't come to the shrine anymore, Mai and the other two pets also felt very sad. Sora and Tezuki suddenly saw Oni jumping around on the roof, so the two of them hurriedly chased after it. But the Oni they saw was the Oni that lived near the shrine. Meanwhile, Tezuki discovered that his Oni had gotten stuck while trying to get through a hole, and because it had eaten too much fat, it couldn't get out on its own. Tezuki brought Oni back to the shrine with its friends, and they drew a picture together to welcome Oni back. On the way back home, Tezuki said that he was very worried about it when it got lost. And when Oni learned of Tezuki's feelings, it cried out of emotion, so from then on it didn't dare to eat Tezuki's sister's food anymore. Sora's father continued to send him a very strange package, and his package shook and made a groaning sound from inside. Sora had prepared his weapons in case some strange monsters appeared inside. But it turned out to be a talking statue of the Egyptian god Anubis. When he first saw Mai, Anubis was very surprised because Mai was from Egypt like him. And because he couldn't move his arms and legs, Anubis had to gnaw on him to feel his body. But that didn't make Mai feel pain but instead made Mai feel extremely good, like getting a massage. This Anubis statue was bought by Sora's father in a souvenir shop in Egypt and it was just a statue mounted on a wooden board so it couldn't move. Sora saw that his father had also sent back some Egyptian sand, and Mai quickly realized that the sand was sent from his homeland. So he happily jumped in and played happily inside the sand. Sora made a small cart so that the dog could pull Anubis around the house, and everyone also brought their pets to play with Anubis. Tezuki told everyone that statues that can talk like Anubis are Tsukimagami, 
The old man statue in the temple is also one of the Tsukimagami. They rarely talk in front of humans. While talking, Sora suddenly started hiccuping continuously, and seeing that, Tezuki said that anyone who hiccups more than 100 times might die which scared the pets. Everyone was shocked when they saw the bandage on Mai's body come off, and Mai jumped on the dog's back and tried to run away from Sora. Even the other pets tried to stop Sora from chasing after it. Tezuki had always wanted to know what was inside Mai's bandage, so he held Sora back to let Mai lose all the bandages. Moki wanted to help Sora catch it but accidentally pulled the tape off more. However, Mai and the dog suddenly stopped. Looking at the pet's attitude, it seemed like they wanted to help Sora stop hiccuping because they thought that Sora would die after hiccuping 100 times. Tezuki explained to them that he was actually just lying about that. Before leaving, everyone said that Sora's house only had a dog as a normal animal. But unexpectedly, Sora's dog had already lived to be 50 years old this year. A classmate showed Sora and Tezuki a picture of a dog that he had taken. At first glance, everyone thought it was just a normal dog. But upon closer inspection, Sora realized that the dog was actually a divine dog. As he was about to go to bed, Anubis suddenly panicked because it was almost time for his favorite romance movie to start. So Sora had to take him out to the living room to watch a movie. Nai was sleeping and suddenly woke up from a nightmare and was so scared that she couldn't see Sora anywhere. So the next morning Mai clung to Sora and didn't dare to leave him. Sora had no choice but to take Mai to school with him, and the god in the shrine stuck a small talisman on Mai's back to mark him in case Mai went missing. Later that day, everyone went to a mountain together because they heard that a divine dog had appeared there. But Sora felt that there wasn't even a normal animal in this place, let alone a divine dog. Everyone was about to leave when Sora suddenly felt something strange. He discovered that today was the day the gods in this mountain were holding a festival. According to Sora, their group had accidentally gotten caught up in that festival. But humans must bring an invitation to participate in this festival, and anyone who tries to participate without a ticket will be punished by the gods here. Immediately after that, three demons appeared in front of everyone and asked them to give them tickets to participate in the festival. And thinking that everyone did not have tickets, one demon transformed into a giant to capture them. But luckily, Sora was given four tickets to participate in this festival by a friend. Sora met the friend who gave him the four tickets again, and this demon friend really liked humans, so he was extremely happy when he knew Sora brought his friend. The demon friend led everyone to meet the two divine dogs, but it seemed that the two were arguing very intensely, so Sora and Tezuki had to split up to help them make up with each other. Soon after, all the demons and legendary monsters gathered at the mountain to play the festival. While everyone was having fun, a human managed to sneak into the festival using a fake ticket, but when the three demons who checked the tickets discovered him, he escaped. The demon friend took Sora's group to a sacred waterfall of the gods to admire its beauty, and while everyone was not paying attention, the human kidnapped Mai. The guards ran to inform everyone that a human had just broken into the festival. Sora was very panicked when he looked around and couldn't find Mai, so they concluded that Mai must have been kidnapped by the human, but they currently don't know where he took Mai. The kidnapper was extremely happy because he had just caught a rare species. And this person was a person who specialized in hunting creatures like Mai to sell for money. The charm that the god had stuck on Mai's back suddenly appeared and flew straight up into the sky. And when they saw the charm, they discovered that Mai and the kidnapper were behind the waterfall. Sora and Tezuki both realized that the only way to catch up with the kidnapper was to climb the cliff next to the waterfall. With Motga's extraordinary strength, she only needed to lightly push Sora up the cliff. Sora climbed the waterfall to try to save Mai as quickly as possible, and while climbing, he accidentally slipped and fell straight down the waterfall. But the two divine dogs caught him in time and dragged him straight up in front of the kidnapper to get Mai back. But this guy only saw creatures like Mai as a commodity to make money for him, so Sora had no choice but to jump in and fight him. Because he was just a student, Sora could not defeat the kidnapper. A local god suddenly spoke up to warn the kidnapper, and he shot a lightning bolt from the sky to strike the kidnapper. Sora and Mai were extremely happy because they thought they would never see each other again. And the kidnapper was taken away by the guards to punish him for daring to trespass into the god's territory. The creatures in the mountain gave Sora's group a present before they left. And as soon as they returned home, Sora and everyone opened the present together. Sora felt a little scared because a gift from the gods might not be like a normal gift. But it turned out that the gift they received was a bunch of supplies for a small festival. And everyone and their pets were also wearing yukata to match the atmosphere of the festival. Daichai and his Baku played a lucky draw. 
but they only drew a piece of cloth that could fly in the wind. Tezuki and Oni played a rubber band shooting game together, but Oni missed and took it out on him. When it was Mai's turn, she let the rubber band bounce straight into her face. Tezuki won the rubber band shooting game and won the first prize, a demon mask. And it seemed like his Oni really liked that mask. Meanwhile, Moki and her dragon were playing water balloon fishing. And the dragon only needed to pull once to catch all the balloons inside. Sora wished that everyone could continue to enjoy the festival together like this next year. But Tazuki said that not only next year, but they would hold the festival every year.